Good morning, friends, and welcome to this, our sermon e-service today. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us as we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ in this time of gathering around the Word of God. As we come as unique as we are, all made in the image of God as brothers and sisters in Christ to the space of, word, of gathering around the Word of God today. Welcome. Friends, if you're new and you're not quite sure who I am, my name is Raymond. I'm a Methodist minister serving the Mahali Circuit of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And I want to invite you to participate in this, our sermon service, as you feel comfortable. Welcome. Friends, as we gather in community as we are, as diverse as we are from the spaces we find ourselves today, I want to encourage you to, to grab a candle and perhaps light it with me as we light our candles as a reminder of the unity that we share in this moment as brothers and sisters in Christ. As we light our candles, it also symbolizes that where we are is a sanctuary, that the light of Christ, that God is with us, where two or more are gathered, God is there. So as we gather in the space around the Word of God, we light this candle as we begin our service, as a reminder of the light of Christ shining in the darkness of our world, that Christ is with us. And with that, we come to a time of opening prayer, and I want to invite you to lift up your prayers, whatever they may be to God as we come to God in prayer. So let's pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we come to you as your children today. We come in this moment of, of gathering around your Holy Scriptures, but, but as we come, we come as diverse and as unique as we are to the space of meeting with you and with our Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. Friends, I want to invite you as we gather just to lift up your prayers to God, whatever they may be at this time. I want to invite you to lift up your prayers of petition, of confession, of as we lift up them, just lift them up to God now. Father, we thank you that you hear these, our prayers. As we lift them up to you, we thank you, Father, that you are with us and that you hear all our prayers. Prayers of confession as we ask your forgiveness for the things we have done wrong. And we hear the words of grace, your sins are forgiven, go and sin no more. As we pray for others, that Father, you know each and every one of them by, by name and the number of hair upon their heads. As we pray for things that we need, that Father, you give it to us according to your will and your purpose. So Father, we thank you that you hear all of these, our prayers. And as we prepare ourselves to receive the word of God, we, we just t close this time of prayer by saying together the, the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. I want to invite you to pray with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we come to the Word of God today, I want to invite you to open your Bible and to follow with me as we will be reading together from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. Now, I'm going to be reading that a little bit later in our sermon, and I'm going to be making reference to a few other scriptures that I'd like you to look up and to read with me as we go in this time of sermon together as well. Friends, as we gather around the Word of God today, we're spending time this coming week preparing ourselves to celebrate Heritage Day. Now, on Friday, the 24th of September here in South Africa, we'll be celebrating Heritage Day. For some of us, it's National Bride Day, but there are various different ways in which we celebrate the diversity of heritage that we have as we gather as a community around the Word of God today. So with that in mind, I, I want to ask you, how will you celebrate your heritage? Have you got plans? Have you, have you spent time thinking about how you will honor your heritage this Heritage Day? Just take a moment to think about that. Perhaps as we prepare for Friday and for Heritage Day, we, we need to ask ourselves, what is my heritage? What is your heritage? Is it English, Corsa, Afrikaans, Zulu, Tswana, Sutu, Pedi? 
Chinese, Jewish, African, Indian, Germanic, Dutch. Friends, and the list can go on and on and on. Because the reality is that that we each have a unique heritage that has brought us to where we are today. A heritage that has been informed by, by many aspects, some of which are our traditions and our culture. But friends, as we, we celebrate our unique heritage, I'd like to encourage you to remember that we may have an earthly heritage, but each and every one of us are children of God. It's our common faith, not our private faith. In other words, not what makes us different, but what rather what unifies us, our shared heritage, our shared Christian heritage as the children of God that binds us together in community with one another. Now, friends, this is a massive topic. But I want today just to give us a, a very brief overview of the most fundamental aspects of our shared Christian heritage. We read in the in the book of Revelation, and I'm going to put the words on the screen here from Revelation 7 verses 9 to 10. And it reads as follows. After that I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne, before the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Friends, in this reading, John shares with us a vision of another kind of community, a, a different type of community, a community of worship, a community of diversity, a community in which we, we hear from every nation, tribe, people and language. They come together and they're worshipping before the throne of God. Now, friends, each and every one of these nations, tribes, people and language, they come together and they're, they're dressed in robes of white, in robes of righteousness. And all of them together cry out, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So friends, what, what does this shared Christian heritage look like for us today? What does it look like for us to, to celebrate and to remember our shared Christian heritage as well? Well, I believe our, our reading from Mark chapter 9 verses 30 to 37 helps us understand this and i want to invite you to follow with me as i read through our scripture i'm going to be reading from the new international version of the holy bible and it reads as follows they left that place and passed through galilee jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples he said to them the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men they will kill him and after three days he will rise but they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet, because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last, the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So friends, as we come to this reading from the Gospel of Mark, our reading starts with, with Jesus focusing on his disciples and teaching his disciples. He's, he's dedicating this moment of his ministry to preparing his disciples for what lies ahead. And as Jesus begins, he, he reminds them yet again that he is going to go and that he's going to die and come back to life. He says to them, oh, let's try that again. He says to them, they left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where he was going because he was teaching his disciples. I already said that. They're focusing his attention on his disciples. He said to them, and this, listen to this, friends. The Son of Man must, so the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant, and were afraid to ask him about it. Friends, he, he said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men who are going to kill him. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. Friends, the truth is, just like the disciples, we often don't understand. 
So many of us don't truly understand the significance of a suffering Messiah. But this, this suffering Messiah, the, the one who dies on our behalf, is a fundamental part of our Christian heritage. Now, we've, we've heard about the work that Jesus has done, the saving work upon the cross of Good Friday, to, to pay the price for your sin, my sin, and all people's sins. Friends, we, we've been told about this, and we put our trust in what we've been told about Jesus as our Savior as the one who who pays the price to bring us back into relationship with God. We've come to faith in Christ through this. We become Christians through the knowledge this knowledge and, and placing our faith in the grace of God. And as we've done this, we've there's a commonality between us and our brothers and sisters in Christ that we are one and we have one faith and one Lord. I mean Paul helps us deep, better understand this as we read from Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 6, as he says to us in this in this reading, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And listen to these words, friends, in verse 4 to 6. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Friends, through Christ we are the children of God, and we are one and united through the love of God. Friends, we are one as we gather here. For there is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope, one hope of salvation, when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So friends, we, we encounter a God who binds us together through a suffering Messiah, the Christ who, who brings us into relationship with God, but also into a deeper relationship with one another as well. Our reading goes on. In verse 33 to 35 from Mark 9. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Friends, in our, our reading continues with these words. And Jesus continues to teach his disciples about what it means to be a Christ follower. That you become a member of a family that has a very different value system to the world. Could we, could we go as far as say it is a counter-cultural community to the systems and values of the world. Values that are, that are often opposite and contrary to those of the world. In, in order to be great, we, we need to be the servant of all. Weakness over strength, unity and community over individuality. Friends, part of our Christian heritage is that we belong to a community that has very different values to the world around us. Values that, that lead to the development and furthering of life and restoration of community and the world. Not just the individual, but the world, the community. A community in which we, we are part and have our part to play. So friends, through Jesus Christ, we, we come into relationship with God and as the children of God, into community with one another as well. But it's in this community that, that Mark concludes our reading with these words. And I want you to hear them, friends. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but, but the one who sent me. He concludes our gospel reading by furthering the teaching of the heritage that we have as Christ followers, by making an example of the, of the type of community that we need to be. Jesus takes a, a little child, the Greek word here means a child or slave, who in those days, and even today in some places, have very little social standing, and says that, that we need to include into our family the ones who are the least and the last. We need to bring the children, the little ones, 
into the community, into the family of God, into the community of believers. Paul helps us better understand this in, our re- in reading from Galatians 3, 26 to 29. And it reads as follows. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Friends, I want you to hear those words because that for me is the foundation of what I'm talking about today. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. You are all one in Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Friends, Jesus establishes that this need to be a welcoming community, that that we need to welcome all people, a family of God that, that welcomes all people regardless of age, gender, sexual orientation, social standing, economic position, skin color, ethnic grouping. A community that, that transcends the boundaries we, we place between ourselves and others. A community where there, there's no them and us. There's no insiders and outsiders. A community where we all are welcome and all are included. In other words, a community that is different. A community that, that is countercultural to the lines and the dividing lines that we apply to each other in community. In other words, the lines along which we divide ourselves don't apply in this community. All are welcome and all are equal. Friends, uh, the polarization of the world falls away and we become united in Christ. But Jesus finishes this section of teaching with a statement that God, that's, that's Yahweh, is the ultimate authority. That the one who sent Jesus and us is welcoming the little children. We need to, to welcome all people. And open ourselves to the opportunity to encounter relationship with God and others. Friends, our our shared Christian heritage hinges on the knowledge and the acknowledgement that God is the ultimate authority. And that, that God has made us who we are, unique as we are, in our crew, in our earthly heritage as we are. But we are children of God, beloved of God unique as we are in community and the diversity of the community that that creates. God has has called us to avoid dividing ourselves, but rather uniting through the unity that, that comes from being the children of God. So friends, as we remember the, the diverse heritage that we have, this, this coming Heritage Day on Friday the 24th, a heritage that that has often made us who we are, but but often creates a diverse and dynamic tension within our community and nation. Let us not forget our Christian heritage and the challenge that our Christian heritage brings to our earthly, worldly heritage. Let us bring unity and not diversity, uh, unity and not division, diversity and not our own way. Friends, it's in our Christian heritage that that we bring unity and love, healing, and transformation. So I'm very, going to very briefly recap. Friends, our Christian heritage is that we have a loving God who wants us all to be in relationship with God. A God who has made a way for, for all people to come into relationship through Jesus and his redeeming work upon the cross. Our suffering Messiah who paid the price on our behalf that we have been accepted and that we've been accepted through faith and we've received through faith, through the grace of God, that despite our our sin-sick human condition, God, through Jesus, has made us acceptable through forgiving our sin and we have entered into the family of God. We have been connected with our brothers and our sisters from around the world, from the, the various cultures, traditions and heritages that we have. A family which has very different values to the world and a community that that needs to impact the world with these values so as to bring life and restoration, healing and transformation into our world. So friends, I want to invite you as we prepare our hearts and our lives to, to live out what it means to be a child of God into our heritage, 
in the spaces and places we find ourselves. I want to invite you to spend time with God this week. And as you do, perhaps ponder and reflect on the question, how are we partnering with God to bring unity despite our diversity to the kingdom of God through the church? I want to say it again. How are we partnering with God? The one who has created each person and we're created in creation with God, connected to to the season of creation. How are we partnering with God to bring unity despite our differences, despite our diversity? How are we bringing unity to the kingdom of God through the church as children of God together? How are we doing this? And once you spend time reflecting on that, I want to invite you to, to take a moment to to reflect on that and to ask God to help us. Help us as the church to be one and undivided as the children of God. With that, let us come to a time of prayer. Almighty and ever-loving God, we, we come as diverse as we are. You know us because we're all made in your image. Diverse as we are, you are the one who has created us unique as we are. And we thank you for the diversity that you have made and the richness that it shows us about who you are, mighty God. Help us to bring unity into the spaces where diversity exists. That division may not separate us, but unity through your grace and in community with each other brings us together because you have made a way. Father, where our sins bring division, may your grace your forgiveness, bring healing and transformation that results in unity. So help us, we pray, to be able to know what to do with what we've we've heard today through this sermon. Help us, we pray, for we ask this all in your precious name, Jesus. Now and always. Amen. Friends, as we come to an end of our time of e-service today, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us as we've gathered together as brothers and sisters in Christ as diverse as we are in community with one another. So thanks for being here, and I look forward to journeying with you as we continue to journey as community with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ, both on our, through our e-services as well as through our in-person worship services as well. So friends, as we come to an end of our time together, just a reminder that I am here for any pastoral care needs that you have. My contact details are found in our notices and description of our video. Simply reach out, and I can care for you as I'm able. With that, we close our time together by saying together what's known as the benediction. And we say these words as we bless each other as we go into the coming week. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, have a blessed week. And may you know the blessing of God that goes with you. That God is with you now and always. Amen.